Hi, I'm Ned, and I make games. Today I want to show you how to add cast shadows to my blade grass renderer. It's a bit more complicated than you would think, but cast shadows do certainly add something to the finished product. Keep in mind that this comes with a performance cost, so I'd be careful before adding shadows to a large field of grass. Still, some experimentation can't hurt, can it? Before we get started, I want to thank you all for watching. I make weekly game development tutorials, so subscribe and hit the bell if that sounds up your alley. I also recently launched a tutorial index website, complete with a searchable list of past videos. Check it out in the video description. I made this project using Unity 2020.2.7 F1 and Universal Render Pipeline 10.3.2. If you're using a newer version, check out the video description for any fixes that you need to know about. This video is a direct continuation of my last blade grass video, so watch and work through that and then return here. If you need, you can find links to the video and all of its scripts in this video's description. Let's start by adding a shadow caster pass to the graphic shader. This allows the shadow renderer to see the grass and have it cast some type of shadow. Open your bladegrass.shader file, copy the pass block and paste it below. Change the name and light mode tag to shadow caster and remove the multi-compile hash pragmas except for those dealing with instancing. Define a keyword so that the logic file can change slightly in the shadow caster pass. Now open bladegrass.hlsl. The shader works as is, but a few tweaks will improve shadow quality and efficiency. In the vertex function, replace transform world to h clip with this function from the helper file. It changes the clip space position based on the shader bias options. Let's look into that a little. In your Universal Render Pipeline settings asset, you'll see two shadow bias settings, depth bias and normal bias. Due to the method used to render shadows to textures, you could get much better quality if you offset the cast shadow position based on depth and normal direction. These biases define the length of those offsets. Calculate position, clip space with shadow caster logic handles that math. Don't worry, if it's not in the shadow caster pass, it will return transform world to H clip like normal. Moving on to the fragment function, the shadow caster pass does not need color data, so we can return almost immediately. Write a hash if defined line which returns zero if we're in the shadow caster pass. Wrap the color logic in a hash elfs block. Save the file and return to Unity. You should see shadows, but they look very strange. These blotchy shadow artifacts are called shadow acne, and it's something you try to fix using the shadow bias settings. Unfortunately, they won't help much here. The normal bias expects the normal to point outwards from the mesh face, but each blade's normal points straight up for better lighting. To fix this, we should add a second normal vector strictly for shadow casting that points outwards from the blade. The problem is that each vertex has two sides, so which direction should the normal point? It actually needs to point in both directions for proper shadows from all angles. The only way to do this is to create a twin of each vertex with a flipped shadow caster normal. These reverse vertices must also be connected together by triangles. And then, since there will be two triangles in the same place, we can prevent overdraw by turning on culling and constructing them with opposite winding order. For a refresher on culling modes and triangle winding, I'd recommend watching my video about it linked in the video description. Let's get started by editing the compute shader. First, add another float3 field to the generated vertex struct for the shadow caster normal. Then in make generated point, calculate it. Remember that in tangent space, the y axis is perpendicular to the x and z axes and points directly outwards from the blade. That's perfect, just what we need. Transform from tangent space to object space to get the shadow caster normal. Moving on to triangle building logic, we need to account for doubling faces. First, rename these variables to emphasize that they count values for only one side of the blade. And since we're essentially generating two blades, the generated index and vertex start positions should be doubled. Change the vertex loop to stop at the number of side vertices. Store flipped vertices as a second blade directly after the first one. Mathematically, this maps to the start position plus the number of side vertices plus the loop iteration variable. Call the function make reverse point. 
Let's write that above. It simply copies the past vertex and then flips the caster normal. Back below in main, we need to change the way that we calculate triangles. At the moment, we create a triangle from every three consecutive vertices in the vertex array. However, notice that odd triangles are wound counterclockwise. To fix this, swap the first two vertices in the triangle. Now to generate the backside triangles, they should have opposite winding from the front side and also use reverse normal vertices. Delete the entire triangle construction loop, write a new loop to handle the even numbered triangles, have the loop incrementer add two every iteration to skip odd values, and call add triangle clockwise, passing the loop iteration variable, the index start position, and the vertex start position. Next, call add triangle counterclockwise, but offset the start positions so that they refer to the backside blade. To handle odd triangles, copy the above loop, but have t start at one and flip the add triangle functions. Let's write add triangle clockwise and counterclockwise. For arguments, they take in t, the for loop iteration counter, an index start and a vertex start value. Our old triangle code can live on as add triangle clockwise. Calculate the start position of this triangle in the index buffer, as well as the start index of its vertices. Insert the vertex indices into the buffer. Add triangle counterclockwise is identical, except flip the first and second vertices to reverse the winding order. And we're done with the compute shader, so let's move on to the blade grass baker script. In the generated vertex structure, add a vector3 shadow cast normal field, and adjust the stride to match. Then, in compose mesh, compile all the normals into an array, and store them in the mesh's third UV register, text chord 2. In the bake method, double the generated vertex and index counts, accounting for the backside blades. In bladegrass.shader, remove the cull off lines from each pass, effectively reverting to back culling mode, the default. In bladegrass.hlsl, add a shadow cast normal OS field to the attribute struct with the text chord 2 semantic. Then in the vertex function, when calling calculate position clip space with shadow caster logic, instead of passing the lighting normal, Convert the shadow caster normal to world space and then use that. Now return to Unity and regenerate the grass mesh. Since it has double the vertices and triangles now, you might need to shrink your source mesh. Regardless, once it's finished, shadows should look much better. They're soft, shadow biases affect them, and acne is much less prevalent. Since this grass isn't affected by global illumination, shadows are really dark on it. Implementing global illumination in a custom shader would fill a video series unto itself, but I have a quick trick to get a similar effect. It's much more efficient too. First, open bladegrass.shader, add a shadow lightness float property, ranging from 0 to 1. In bladegrass.hlsl, capture that property in a variable. Then, in the fragment function, split the albedo between the albedo and emission arguments of the universal render pipeline lighting function. URP adds emission at the end of the lighting calculation. By sending a portion of the color as emission, it effectively overwrites a bit of the shadow, while still looking the same in full light. Return to Unity to see what I mean. It's not a perfect solution, but it'll get the job done for now. And that's it for shadowy blade grass. We've completed the basic grass generation, so it's time to move on. Next in this grass series, I'll grow grass on mesh-based terrain, as well as Unity's height map-based terrain, and investigate advanced trampling effects. If any of that sounds interesting, please subscribe so you won't miss those videos. What else would you want to see in a grass renderer? Let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. It would mean a lot if you could like this video, it encourages YouTube to recommend it, and it really helps out the channel. I also want to quickly plug my Patreon page. Don't feel pressured, your watching is more than enough, but if you'd like to contribute to the channel, I have some goodies for you, including early video viewing, voting power and topic polls, downloadable project files, and more. I really appreciate all your support. Again, thanks so much for watching, and make games.